Hi, everybody. I cordially welcome you to today's coffee lecture about open access funding for articles in special issues. The aim of this coffee lecture is to familiarize you with the SNSF's new open access funding regulation for articles in special issues and to show you alternative funding opportunities. After giving you a brief definition of special issues, I will emphasize why the SNSF has excluded articles in special issues from its open access funding based on widely discussed criticisms on special issues. In conclusion, I will provide a comparison of ETH versus SNSF open access funding, highlighting alternative funding options in case authors have an SNSF grant. Special issues are usually published as a separate release of a journal that supplements a current journal series. Therefore, special issues have the same journal title and ISSN as the parent journal. According to Elsevier, a special issue focuses on a specific area of research that has a broad appeal and falls within the aims and scope of the journal. So it's a kind of a collection of relevant articles with a strong shared subject orientation, usually organized by invited guest editors, who in turn invite individual authors or groups of authors to contribute to the designated topic of a special issue. Based on Springer's definition, special issues may include original primary research articles, reviews and other content types published by the journal, which are subject to peer review procedures to ensure their scientific quality. The last point is usually only given if the journal, if the parent journal also has a implemented peer review procedure for content quality assessment on article level. At this point, you may be wondering why articles in special issues now are excluded from open access funding by the SNSF. The criticism of special issues published primarily by some gold open access publishers is impressively illustrated by the example of MDPI. On this slide, I quote results of an analysis of special issues at MDPI conducted by Paolo Crosetto, a senior researcher and experimental economist at the French Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and the Environment. On the left, we can see how the number of special issues has nominally developed over nine years from a total of 75 MDPI journal titles. In 2020. In 2013, there were an average of five special issues per journal title. In 2021, there were a staggering 500 plus special issues per journal title. I mean, I would cautiously say that increase is incredible. The chart on the right shows the development of the amount of special issues assigned to 75 MDPI journal titles with impact factor for the same period and with an equal result. Considering that MDPI is a gold publisher and therefore charges publication fees for each article, one can derive from this the development of an apparently very successful but highly controversial business model. The insight gained from these results, namely that it is possibly less about the dissemination of new scientific findings and more about the crude pursuit of profit, corresponds very well with the SNSF's decision to no longer support publication fees for articles in special issues. Based on own analysis by the SNSF, it concludes that the large increase and inconsistent processes have led to some negative developments. From February 2024, the SNSF will no longer, longer fund open access articles in special issues. According to the SNSF in 2018, 33 SNSF funded articles were published in special issues. By 2022, this number increased up to 315. The SNSF says, some journals now publish significantly more special issues than regular issues. 
and emphasizes that bibliographic analysis show that the increase in the number of special issues is going hand in hand with, with shorter processing times and lower rejection rates. Furthermore, the SNSF states that publishing a large number of articles as quickly as possible does not add much value. Financial resources are used up, which are then no longer available to the SNSF for funding new research. Although the SNSF has adjusted its op open access funding criteria, it does not differentiate between traditional journal articles and articles in special issues when it comes to assessing whether an article fulfills the grant requirements. This means from the SNSF's perspective, openly accessible articles from both types are compliant with its grant regulations. In my opinion, it is very important to add and to emphasize that even though the SNSF generally excludes special issues from OA funding, special issues have a long tradition in scholarly publishing and are by no means predatory or dubious per se. The following checklist provides an overview of open access funding opportunities as well as a comparison of article funding opportunities at ETH versus SNSF. I would only like to discuss the points highlighted in gray and light gray. If we look at ETH libraries funding regulations for open access publications, the SNSF decision produces a so-called second degree exclusion for some cases. Suppose you have written or co-authored a paper that would be eligible for SNF funding. According to our funding criteria, we would exclude you from funding and ask you to apply for it at SNSF. If this paper had been submitted for a special issue, the SNSF would also reject it and you would end up with two non-funding decisions. So that would be very badly done. But there are there is a reason for hope since the ATH library does not distinguish between articles in scientific journals and articles in special issues. Although SNSF funded articles in gold journals are, or related special issues are principally excluded from funding according to the ETH library's APC guidelines, an exception is made for articles in special issues of gold journals and funding is ensured by the ETH library. To round this coffee lecture up and to reduce the complexity again, hopefully, please bear in mind that articles in special issues can be funded by the ETH library, regardless of any provisions to the contrary, provided that our internal funding criteria are met. You can find our funding criteria in our open access wiki linked on this slide. And in case you are getting desperate in your search for answers as to who is funding your open access publication, please feel free to contact us at the e-publishing group at any time. A small note at the end, the next coffee lecture will take place in a week at the same time as today and will focus on smart maps. Thanks for coming and thank you very much for your attention.